Um, my name is Neil Bottomer. I grew up here in Cork City, was a student at UCC and then went to Dublin for a year, went to the States for four years to Harvard for a PhD in Celtic Studies and have been lecturing in Irish at UCC since 1982. Written Irish dates to roughly about 500 AD. There are two forms of it. One is um, markings on stones which are intended as grave markers. We have the second largest collection here in UCC of those items. The language writing style is known as Ohm. But writing as we conventionally know it probably began when Christianity arrived here and brought Latin script, which uh, writers of Irish adapted to use for the purposes of the Irish language. So from that period on, roughly 600 onwards, you get firstly fairly simple notes in Irish to Latin texts. But as time goes by then, a fully fledged literature reflecting usage of Irish as a, as a sort of a complete language. Um, the phases of Irish are roughly 600 to 900 called Old Irish, which is that original block of notes to Latin texts. Then 9 to 12 is when you get a period called Middle Irish and you get an increasing amount of literature in the broadest sense. 1200 then to 1650 is known as Early Modern Irish. Some of those dates are punctuated by historical events like the arrival of the Vikings is roughly around 900, 8 to 900, that's the 9 to 12 Middle Irish phase, but it's when the Normans start to come here, roughly the end of the 12th century, that you get this early modern Irish phase. And then the English conquest around the 1650s determines the, the, the final stage of Irish that we're in called uh, late modern Irish, which is what's the type of Irish there at the present. Um, everything is going fine until the 17th century, but the assertion of English authority in the 17th century is a sort of a, down, a, def a deflection point downwards for Irish. And it leads to Irish being the sort of the um, relatively restricted language that it is today in, in comparative terms compared to its past. There was also um, a sort of a form of ethnic a perception from on the point of view of the of the Normans particularly that uh, of the ethnic inferiority of the Irish that's possibly the start point that's associated with writings um, of, of a, a Welsh churchman a guy called Giraldus Cambrensis in which he painted the Irish in a fairly negative light that took then statutory form that negative appraisal of Irish customs language and so forth in what are known as the statutes of Kilkenny but whether those were ideal rather than real world measures, in other words, capable of being applied in the real world is another matter because the, the Normans soon became pretty much um, Gaelicized in, in practice. But I'd say by the, the what, late 17th, early 18th century, while there may not have been measures against Irish per se, similar to the statutes of Kilkenny, the penal laws made those who were Irish speakers effectively second-class citizens by denying them access to Parliament or to professions like the law. So the penal laws mightn't have been specifically linguistic in their orientation, but practically they targeted a segment of society which would have been Irish, using Irish. The one thing I think is that there's a there's famous Irish psychiatrist, a man called Ivor Brown. He's still alive and he was writing again around the time of the Celtic Tiger collapse. And um, I think I read items by him saying that we needed a good session with a shrink as a sort of a nation. And uh, an exploration of that issue might come up. It could be that it was associated with poverty and the shame of being a second class community and language being such a marker of identity was identified by the community as itself as uh, the thing to get rid of. But there are all sorts of external explanations as to why, but that internal psych psychological analysis or, or psychosocial analysis possibly hasn't properly taken place. We're closest to Scottish Gaelic, which may in fact be an offshoot of Irish. Um, we're in the Celtic camp in the sense that we are related to Welsh and Breton, but they're less closely related to us language wise. Um, they do share some of the same language features, 
particularly items called initial mutations where word changes, words change at the beginning in certain phonological or morphophonemic circumstances. W Breton is, a, is an offshoot of what was probably a British language. So it's not directly related, it's less directly related to us than Welsh. There are shared elements of vocabulary between them all, but there are curious divergences between Welsh and Irish which aren't properly explained. That's the technical aspect of how we, we relate to those languages. We then have certain shared um, experiences in the sense that all those languages, Scottish, Gaelic, Welsh, Breton, maybe less so Welsh, became somewhat marginalised. So there is the sort of sociolinguistic shared marginalisation experience apart from the actual technical affinity.